Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the wacky world of World of Warcraft news. Where to be real with you, um, it's not all rosy, unless you are one for whom the content you're doing uh, has just been nerfed, and that's actually something you want, or your class has been buffed, like mine. But more seriously though, we do have important topics to get through with more colour on an expected patch 9.1 release window, stuff that reportedly does come directly from Blizzard, and then also, well, Blizzard changing how you pay for World of Warcraft. Now there is good news. You can get 10% off today's sponsor dashlane.com forward slash bellular, who will massively upgrade your internet life, it's that simple. Dashlane is the app that you need on your device this year. It makes your life easier by generating and auto-filling your passwords and your personal information through its extensions, right? And that means you've never got to manually type in a password again. It works on your phone even, giving you security and convenience wherever you go. Now, all of the information is locally decrypted with your master password, and that would mean that even if Dashlane had their servers hacked, for the hacker it would be like breaking to the bank, finding out the bank doesn't have the key to the vault. All your info would still be safe. They also have got dark web monitoring, a VPN, and if you use a site and that site is hacked, they will send you a security alert to fix your password. So stop filling in your personal info and using unsafe, hackable passwords and try Dashlane for free on your first device at dashlane.com forward slash bellular. And you get all of that in one app across all the platforms. And if you follow my link and use the promo code bellular, you get 10% off. All pretty damn awesome, I use them myself, and thanks to them for supporting our team. With that said, let's go. So we all want to know when patch 9.1 will release, especially since it's still not on the PTR, and BlizzCon didn't give us that much information really when it comes to the details. Unfortunately, I've got less than ideal news via long, long time World of Warcraft streamer, Towley. So, Towley is pretty tight with a bunch of Blizzard people, from what I understand anyway, and he's also somebody who is very much not in the hater camp or the aggro camp towards World of Warcraft. Uh, you know, Towley will often laugh at his own expense, you know, joking about being a shill, so, you know, you're, you, this is stuff that's not coming from a source who is negative by default or anything like that. So I do think it's some real good faith stuff, and he's not saying this to stir, stir anything up, or, you know, do any of that stuff. So on stream, he said that he was talking to a Blizz employee and that that person said, internally, that they're worried about patch 9.1, that it will just be too late. Now here's the quote from Towley. A lot of people at Blizzard, they're worried that if 9.1 takes as long as they predict it will, that even by 9.1, people might not want to play it because of how long it will take. These are people over there that are saying this, they know they're in trouble. Now, then in a separate video posted on his YouTube channel about the general state of the game, which I recommend you check out, he said that a Blizzard person told him that June would be optimistic for the patch, and he seemed to believe August. Now, if June is optimistic, then yeah, July or August is likely. That's a long ass time. I mean, if it released in mid-July, say the 14th, that would be 233 days since launch. Meanwhile, Legion was cranking out a patch every 77 days. So, sorry, but something's wrong. Now, could it all, all be COVID? I mean, yeah, but even if it is, I mean, player experience is king. Value for money is king. And I think there is zero doubt that World of Warcraft is a worse value for money deal now as compared to Legion. And if you're going purely by patch cadence, BFA. And BFA itself was consistently behind schedule, shipping a lot less content than Legion. In a word, ouch. So if I was to add anything to that, I mean, there's a few awkward things. Renown level 40 feels like the natural, you know, it's like the natural end of like your primary progression. I mean, the sort of the intent is that you then grind anima for 700,000 years to get your cosmetics based on the renown. But I think that renown track to a lot of people, they felt like, oh, okay, you know, 40, 
maybe that'll take us like what, you know, 18 to 20 weeks, uh, maybe 16 to 20 weeks. And then that's maybe, you know, shortly after that, people would expect the, you know, the, the 0.5 patch or the 0.1 patch. At least they would have expected that based on Blizzard's patch cadence for past expansions, both Legion and BFA. Uh, but that ain't, that's not what's happening. That's not what's happening, right? And that's obviously awkward. So that is a big issue. Then also, I mean, look, Mists of Pandaria and Legion versus now, right? Those, those expansions both had a, a lot of content. Now, yes, both of them slowed down their latter phases, but man, like first half of MOP by calendar was just like patches, patches, patches up till uh, 5.4, you know? Legion, it was every 77 days. That was so much content and it felt great being a WoW player because there was always something in the PTR, there was always something on the horizon to be excited about, and then there was also quite a lot of content, quite a lot of things coming, you know, coming up. That was pretty good. And now we're in that situation where we're just so far away from that. And I do have to wonder, what is it? I mean, my personal suspicion is that Blizzard makes the game so goddamn systemic that they create, you know, they create nightmares. They create their own prison, basically. Um, with all of these systems and things that are just, you know, there's so many interdependencies. And I think that's why we're left with systems that don't really satisfy players, and then just not a lot of content. It's that tricky thing. I mean, a lot of that collection gameplay in Legion, that felt like a side activity to go and do. But in this expansion, it's basically just unlock your cosmetic and then grind so much anima. I think that's just really, really sucked the life out of a bunch of that casual content. And I think that's meant that unless you just live to do Mythic Plus and raiding and you want to progress onto Mythic raiding or, you know, PvP is your thing, then there's just not a draw to the game right now. If I was to say one thing, it would be the old adage, KISS. Keep it simple, stupid. I don't want to put stupid at the end, but that's kind of the acronym. The more simple I think our content and our systems is, I'd imagine then, you know, the less things can go wrong and the more it could just end up working. And to me, it's really felt like for the longest time, or at least for the last few years, Blizzard have been spending so much time trying to work out what the systemic wrapper of content is that nowhere near enough time has actually went into the, the damn content itself. And I think that's what makes everything overcomplicated, unsatisfying, and, well, what leads us into situations like this. Which sucks. And to be clear too, it's not always necessarily the devs' fault. I mean, there is COVID, there is all of that. And this is a live game, you know? Other games, they just get to delay by a year or maybe even more. Blizzard can't do that with World of Warcraft because it's a live game, right? So that's obviously something we need to take into account as well. But that said, this is a bad look and it's a doubly a bad look with our next story. Blizzard are changing how you pay for World of Warcraft Reactions are not particularly great, so they're removing the 30, 90, and 180 day game time options. And that means that if you don't want an auto-renewing subscription, you will have to buy two months at once. It's obvious what's going on here. It nudges people towards the subscription that automatically recurs. You see, here's the thing. If you buy 30 days of game time, that's the non-recurring thing, whenever that game time expires, you have a decision. You're like, okay, my game time has expired. Do I want to add another month? If you're on a subscription, then it just rolls and rolls and rolls and rolls. You're never really presented with that choice unless you actively think, oh, wait, do I actually want to cancel this subscription? And a part of the economics of subscription services is that rate of people who will just let their sub roll and roll and roll and roll and not cancel it if they're not actually using it. So it is moving people towards that. And I think it's pretty damn obvious and transparent that that's what they're doing. They want you on the recurring subscription. I mean, the big thing they've tried to push is not even selling you a store mount for 20 bucks. What they've pushed is you being on a six month subscription and then you getting a mount for free via that. Now, if you do plan to play World of Warcraft for six months, then yeah, that is cheaper and you get a map, so it feels like a win-win. At least, you know, the, the value, right? To the player. Whereas obviously, for a business, what they will want is to recognize that six months of, of revenue right the hell now. Because if you get that six months up front, what happens? 
Well, if you're dissatisfied with the game in two or three months, like many people perhaps are right now, it doesn't matter, you've already paid for six months up front. So in a world where we get a World of Warcraft patch every six to eight months, which seems to be the case right the hell now, they obviously want to push you away from just buying, you know, a little bit of game time here, game time there, whenever you actually want to play the game. And they obviously will want to push you towards the big six month recurring bundle or just any form of recurring thing because the chances of you dropping off are actually a good damn bit lower. I should then also say that this is pretty rough for a bunch of people who, uh, you know, financially are going to struggle with this, right? Now, for a bunch of people, it's really not an issue at all. But there are people in other countries for whom in their local currency, World of Warcraft is really quite expensive as compared to their cost of living. And a whole bunch of those people, you know, they're either using WoW Gold, right, and WoW Token, or, you know, they're getting those 30 days uh, where when they can. And I've seen a whole bunch of comments and people saying that this is the case for them. Somebody said that WoW is like 3.7 times more expensive in their own local currency. So for a bunch of those people, Yes, this sucks. It gives them less flexibility. And then obviously it means that the way that people would buy World of Warcraft is two months at once, which is obviously better because, yeah, there's a high chance if you buy one month that you'll want to buy another month, but it's a lot safer to just get you to buy two months up front. I mean, all of this stuff makes complete business sense. And the only way to get 30 days of game time, I guess then, is WoW Token. But you've got to remember, WoW Token... Blizzard get more money for that 30 days of game time. So they've made it so the only way to get your 30 days is via the, the most profitable one for them, which, uh, you know, is obviously not a surprise, but at the end of the day, it is a business. It's how they work. Now, I'm not saying that to defend them. We can disagree with their move, but that's the move that they're making. And I think it is completely transparent and uh, it's less options for the consumer. And that is, I think, a bad thing. We all know why this is going on. Does, you know, and just because it's good for business and Blizzard is a business, that does not mean we have to be okay with it. All right, let's talk about the actual video game. Big nerfs. So following the small round of mythic nerfs featured in last week's news, this week we saw a pretty damn sizable uh, change to both um, Sludge Fist and Stone Legion Generals, and some of these things actually apply to Heroic Mode 2. So I'll cover Heroic first. So on Heroic, the radius of Sludge Fist's destructive stomp is actually down from 20 to 16 yards, and the allowed range apart for the chain links has been increased from 12 to 14 yards across all difficulties. That's an extremely noticeable change that eliminates a whole bunch of early wipes. To be honest, I think it's a little bit not needed. I thought that fight was fine. Anyway, uh, for Stone Legion Generals, the duration of the Anima Orbs in the intermission phase, that's been increased from 15 to 20 seconds, so you'll have a bit longer before they disappear off the ground, and also, uh, of course, before they expire once they are picked up. Then also, the Stacking Healing Reduction Aura from the Goliaths has been capped at 80%, down from 100%, which certainly does make the nasty overlaps with high group-wide damage uh, not be as punishing or stressful for the healer, so I'll rejoice at that. Okay, for Mythic then, the travel time of the Fractured Debris from Pillars has been uh, increased by a second, and the impact locations on the floor are now more visible, which should make progression a bit easier and re-clear smoother. Then, the Absorb Shell channel of uh, Commandos, that has been increased from 4 seconds to 5 seconds, and that's in addition to the pushback from Skirmishers being reduced by 20%. Then also, both Wicked Blast and Laceration damage has been decreased by 15 and 10% respectively. So together, that is, um, I mean, yeah, that's all a bunch of, I guess, pretty welcome changes for a really frustrating encounter. I mean, Stone Legion Generals, frustrating and heroic. I'm uh, glad I'm not trying it in Mythic. Then next up, we've got a fun, stygious surprise. So there's a Redditor. His name is Cyros. And he shared his frustrations with uh, both the Maw and also with Blizzard themselves in a post you may have seen, but it is something that will apply to you. We all know the danger of losing half our Stygia when we die in the Maw. Now for that, the intended game mechanic is that you can reclaim your lost Stygia if you just go back to your dead corpse, right? Go back there safely. The Dark Souls inspirations are obvious. However, there are certain locations in the Maw where your corpse will be unreachable or will just float in the air. 
And such an unfortunate turn of events happened to our dear Redditor this week, where they were simply unable to reclaim their lost Stygia from, uh, yeah, just from their floating corpse that was over the edge of the Maw. So it was just literally impossible for them to click in the corpse. So they couldn't get their Stygia back. The GM response to this was basically just that actually that's the intended experience. Which is a bit odd if, you know, your, your corpse is sort of floating halfway up there. Now, you could say it's a Souls-like experience, so it's meant to be punishing. And if you went and died in a stupid place where you couldn't get your body back, it's your fault. You could say that. I mean, fair enough. It's really just down to what people think the Maw and think Stygia should be. Uh, that's essentially the situation. Basically, if you've got a bunch of Stygia, really do not die in such a way that your body will just be floating in midair where you can't click it. Now, regardless of whether this is intentional or not, I think for many people it just uh, is another mental reason or another worry that would make them not want to venture to the Maw. Next up, buffs. So to compensate or combat some of last week's bug fixes, which uh, did of course result in a bit of a nerf to some specs, Blizzard have applied a few minor buffs to the Hunter, Monk, and Warlock. So Beast Mastery's Beast Cleave now uh, causes your pet to strike other targets for 90%, uh, up from 75% of their damage, so that's pretty nice. And for Marksmanship, which is the spec I main, Aimed Shot damage has seen a flat 5% increase, and Trick Shots now causes Aimed Shot or Rapid Fire to ricochet for 55% damage, up from 50%. Now this should partially make up for the sort of fix slash nerf to uh, Wild Spirits that happened last week, so there's that. Now for the Windwalker Monks, yet more changes, uh, this time in the form of a slight buff to their Spinning Crane Kick ability. Its damage will now be increased by 15%, up from 10% per unique target struck in the last 20 seconds, which is actually up from 15 seconds. Um, that's, you know, with your standard rotational abilities, and uh, now also benefits from the Mastery Combo Strikes. And lastly, Fists of Fury now deals 70% of damage to secondary targets, up from 50, so that's pretty sweet. Then for the demo locks, flat 3% spell and pet damage increase across the board. Though top end uh, warlocks like THD have um, you know shown the spec strengths uh, before the buff occurred. Uh, perhaps this buff will further push them ahead of other specs or something, but anyway, that's the changes. All right, time for some more hypey news, and that is that invites for TBC Classic Beta have been out, or yeah, accounts are being flagged. My account is flagged, so fun. Uh, the majority of this is of course going to content creators, which, I mean, obviously we all know what's going on there, and if you feel like that's unfair, I mean, I totally get what you're saying. People like me are obviously those who benefit, and uh, it's just that thing where at the end of the day, just like with those monetary changes, Blizzard is a business. If you only are giving out so many keys, yeah, give them to people who have got streams so you can get free marketing. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. Now, there was a little bit of confusion initially where people, well, basically, there was like incorrect flagging of the TBC Classic beta before it became official. That crushed hopes for many. Um, so that's basically the situation. All quite exciting, and uh, I'll try to chase down some uh, some beta, you know, slots to uh, see if I can do a giveaway in the channel or or something like that. And then next, a bit more rapid fire. So Blizzard teamed up with Doctors Without Borders for this year's charity battle pets, which are Bananas and Daisy the Sloth. And uh, some nice news, 500k in donations has been, uh, well, has happened. So that unlocks the Bananas pet for free for everybody, which is pretty neat. And if donations hit $1 million by April 26th, we'll get Daisy the Sloth. So that's, uh, that's pretty neat. Okay, next up, just for the in-game things, it's Mythic Dungeon Week, so be sure to pick up the four Mythic Dungeons quest from uh, from the NPC. That, of course, will get you a bit of heroic Castle Nathria loot, which for many people is, uh, well, one of the few sources of uh, 213 gear. Now, additionally, the final boss of each dungeon uh, this week will drop an additional piece of loot, though that does exclude Mythic Plus Dungeons. But still, that's pretty good for taking, you know, alts through the world tour of Mythic Zeros and getting some starter gear. Then the other thing is that it is the Bastion world boss this week, so while doing your weekly anima quest, be sure to stop by uh, Valinor, the Light of Eons, in Bastion. This is especially good for new characters, of course, for your gearing and for your alts, uh, since you'll also have a chance at receiving 
extra renown. Now, the legendary powers that drop from this one are also very good. In fact, it's Elemental Shaman's best single target legendary and the recently buffed Final Verdict legendary for Rat Paladins and uh, a good situational legendary, in fact, for Holy Priests. So if you're one of those, it's probably worth checking the world boss out to get your Legos. Then also, battle for Azeroth time because be sure to kill Dune Gorger Kraluok, or whatever he's called, uh, the world boss in Valdun this week, uh, because that will give you a chance at getting Molly. Very cute alpaca mount. And of course, you can do that once per character, so you've got a whole bunch of level 50s, dust them off and uh, go get your alpaca. Then also, Arena World Championship Season 1 has started. Uh, so, now that the initial four qualifier cups have concluded, the top eight teams have advanced to the AWC Season 1 circuit, so each of the eight teams will face off in a four-week-long round-robin, all, of course, competing for their share of a $160,000 prize pool and, of course, an, inv an invite to the uh, Season 1 Finals. And then, finally, something pretty awesome, eh? in fact, a brand-new Arena Match uh, Analysis tool which should be really useful for, you know, improving your arena skills, knowing what went right, what went wrong in the last match, and uh, just being able to watch back a full replay and, you know, see it actually what had happened, and also to watch high MMR player reports from the community. So that is, uh, that's a new feature, you'll see it on the screen right now. Pretty awesome. I mean, I'm one of those people, you know, where I've always wanted to get into arena properly, right? Because it seems like a pretty awesome uh, thing to do, in my opinion. I mean, I remember being excited about it when I was in the Burning Crusade, when I was young. Um, but, you know, now the PvP gearing makes a bit more sense and all that stuff. I'd love to get into arenas more. And that we can have tools like this to actually help, you know, learn how a match goes. You know, I could find a really good MM hunter or, you know, whatever hunter, and I could dive into their logs and I could actually learn their decision making, how they go up against things. I think that's really awesome. So, once again, the World of Warcraft community, when it comes to making tools and stuff, they're really pretty damn cool, aren't they? And really, that's it for the World of Warcraft news. Now, if you would like to, uh, well, support our channel and also vastly upgrade your internet life, uh, check out Dashlane with our link down below. Like, look, I've been using Dashlane for like well over a year now, maybe two, and it's just great. I mean, I want to log into a website on my phone. Well, I just face ID, use Dashlane as the password manager, done. And that's all the same stuff that's, you know, on my PC on Chrome via the extension, all very handy indeed. So a big thanks to them, really does actually um, support the channel, especially in these sort of content lull times. So we really do appreciate it. With that said also, thank you to you for watching and it's time to end the video. Video ended. See you later. <laughs> <laughs>